also your books in the uh, and also your clothes in the in the same wardrobe. You want to keep something which is visible and easily accessible. What is that? It is your purse, it is your keys, etc. Your clothes, you will also look at what is going to be used on a daily basis that you will keep it at an accessible place. And the ones which you are not going to use on a daily basis, that you will keep it on the top or on the bottom. Extending that example onto, onto a storage, what we do is the one which is very very critical for you, your day to day requirements, we keep it on highly available systems which are easily accessible and accessible at a very fast rate. Information that is not required at that point of time, but if it is re required from a point of the organization's requirements for regulations, that you store it elsewhere. It could be far outside. To give you another example, your mark cards. Mark cards are extremely important when you have to get your first job. Beyond that, you may not need it on a daily basis, so you again store it in your almira. But you are going to need it. You need it throughout your life. So that is how we do the segregation of information from an organization perspective. We understand the criticality and then start storing it. So what are the technologies we have in this? We do have storage systems which can house a single storage system which can, which can house thousands of drives. It is not just one or two drives, we are talking about thousands of drives in a single storage, in a single system as such. Maybe it is spread across multiple drives, but in a single storage system, you will have thousands of drives. In fact, EMC can support up to 2,400 drives in a single unit as such. In such a case, you need to have data protection. How do you protect your data? What is a simple way in which you can protect your data? Any, any thoughts here? Have you heard of the tape backup? Have you heard of, you know, copying your data? You use your CDs, right? You copy some of your movies and other files which are not going to use on a regular basis. You copy on your CDs and keep it away. So even if your disk crashes or your system crashes, you still have a data which can be retrieved. Similarly, all these organizations actually do what we call as the daily backup. They backup the information. And we are talking about large capacities of data. We are talking about capacities as high as like 50 to 100 terabytes being backed up on a daily basis. What are we talking about here? Hello. In a system like this, in a laptop like this, the capacities we look at is about 40 GB to about 160 GB. But on a large storage system, when we have petabytes of storage, the daily backup itself can go up to 40 to 50 terabytes. Hence, they look at highly available, high capacity tape libraries. They back up the data on the tape libraries, on the tapes, and then for protection of any local disasters, they move these tapes to an alternate site. So even if there is a disaster here, if the site completely comes down, I will be able to recover my entire data using the tapes which are available at the alternate site. So that's how we achieve the local protection of the data. Remote protection, I said, like, you know, you build an alternate site where you copy the data seamlessly, continuously, to the alternate side. Hence, you'll be able to start your business functions at the alternate side. Right? So, I did mention about data backup being done on a daily basis and the capacity of data backup is growing exponentially every day. So, what is the way in which you can optimize this particular environment? You need to archive. As I mentioned earlier, your mark card, which is not used on a daily basis, but it is extremely critical for you to actually keep it away from your wardrobe into an Almira. That process is called archiving. Backup is a process where you make another copy of the data. In an archive, you actually move it onto an alternate location. It could be different storage systems as such. So here is the way we project it. There is a small animation. So the production data as it starts growing, you will also keep taking backups. But when you move the not so important data onto the archive, your production capacity also reduces. What we also saw is uh, as and when we started increasing the capacity, the backup window, the time we take to backup also started increasing because the tapes are actually so big. Tapes, what we use in our systems are similar to the tapes what you see here. They are called senior devices. Hence, 
the backup also, the time to take backup also is high and also time to restore this information is also very high. Hence, we started looking at a new technology where we can backup instead of a tape, we started backing up on disk drives. But it's an entire data that is being backed up. So how did we started looking at? So now I've slowly started touching upon the emerging technologies. What are the new technologies which we are seeing in the market? I'll give you a brief on what is being done and how we are going to achieve it in the future and currently what we have started implementing in some of the cases. <coughs> there could be a lot of data which is duplicated. For instance, like if I give this presentation, which is about 5 MP, if I give it to each one of you, and if in your college, if you have a common storage where you can store your personal files, your uh, you know project data, or if you, if you store this 5P5, assuming that there are about 100 people here, <coughs> look at the amount of storage capacity you are going to use, or rather waste. A 5P5, 100 of you storing on the same packet storage will occupy 500 MP. But it's the same file. You are not going to modify it, you are going to just read that file, refer it whenever you want. <coughs> you definitely have such information which is duplicated. What we have also seen in some of the organizations is the movie files. 300, 400 MB movie files are being sold by multiple people that gets packed up on us. We are wasting space there. So we came up with a technology where in fact we identify the duplicate data and we sold only one copy of that file and then we start giving you references, reference to everybody. This is done automatically within the storage system. It gives you, gives you references, so anybody who wants to access this file can access one common file which is stored. But all the hundred of you will be able to access the same file. This was the first step we implemented. The next step was, what happens if some of you, over a period of time, if you are asked to make the same presentation, what's, what are the changes you are going to do? One simple change you might do is my first slide. You will change my name and then put your name there. That is a change. And you will do the presentation. But what happens there? In your office environment, Microsoft Office, it treats it as a different file now because you have done a change. Right? So although you did a change of only the name, which is few bytes or few kilobytes, you're going to back up the, I mean, you're going to store this file as completely a different file. Again, adding to the, you know, storage capacity that is being used. If more than 10 of you do, there is an additional capacity which is being consumed there. To overcome this, we came up with an innovative technology where we started even reading the file, the contents of the file. 